the demand function is given as 160 e to the negative 0.04x, right? Yeah. And then um, the x is between 0 and 95. So part A, you're going to find the number of the unit So That means you're going to find x that give you the maximum revenue, the key term revenue, and the maximum. And this is the interval, that's a closed interval. That means you're gonna look for the absolute maximum value on the closed interval. And then for part B, you're gonna apply the price per unit. What is the price per unit? The, the price per unit is the D or the demand function, because the D is a price function, right? Uh -huh. You're going to find the price that you, the maximum revenue, that is the consequence of finding X from part A and round to the nearest cent. So this one, you have nothing to do with the E or the elasticity of the demand. So you, if you want to go that route, that's fine as well, but you just have to do additional work to, um, well, I would say that might be another Quick way to do it because if you use the revenue function directly, which is what you did, I mean you you, you uh, find the is that right? Yeah, you find the R prime. Uh -huh. prime if you find mm -hmm. so uh, back to my first question. So what is your Rx? That is a uh, sixteen x. E. Mm -hmm. How do you get that? The uh, Rx is the x times the demand function, correct? Yeah. Which is x times 160 times e to the negative 0.04x or 160 times x times e to the negative 0.04x. Yeah. So this is a revenue function. I missed the zero. Oh, you cannot miss it. Okay. And then to find the x that maximize the revenue, or this part is about the absolute maximum because this is the closed interval. Okay, the closed interval. So that means we're gonna find the critical number. So first find the critical value from finding the R prime and then let it be zero. So what is the R prime? What did you get? R prime. Mm -hmm. What rule you are applying? Uh, the product rule. The product rule because you see the product of the x and exponential. Yeah. Did you take the 160 as a coefficient? Yeah. Okay, so that would be my recommendation to take 160 as the coefficient. So then you just find the derivative of the product of the x and e to the negative 0 0.04x, okay? or 160 multiplied by using the product rule. This is the first one and this is the second one, right? Mm -hmm. The first one is X, the second one derivative gonna be E to the negative 0 0.04 X multiplied by negative 0 0.04 and then plus the derivative of the first times the second function. Okay, and then what we can do uh, from the R prime to, to just simplify. The next step is going to be the simplify step. And since this is the exponential involving, so you can distribute the 160 to get rid of the number in the decimal form. Okay. And let's see, that's a matter of how you manage the, the function here. Now let's see, let's do one step at a time before you get too confused. So distribute this in. So 160 times 0 0.04, what do you get? 160 times. Uh -huh. Times 0 0.04. It's negative sign, right? Yeah, so it's just negative 6.4. Uh, negative 6.4 x e to the negative 0.04x and the second one going to be 160 e to the negative 0.04x this is the r prime okay 
and both of them have the common factor e to the power e to the power so i'm gonna factor that out of the way e to the negative 0 0.04x and then inside of the parentheses i will have negative 6.4x plus 160 as the expression for the r prime <clears throat> another one that i can do more since i have negative power i'm gonna write it as the reciprocal of the positive power and multiply by negative the quantity negative 6.4x plus 160. So at this step, we have um, the R prime in the form of negative 6.4x plus 160. All divided by e to the 0.04x, right? And then, oops, let me see. And then your goal is to find the critical point. You're gonna let the R prime be zero, one case, or the R prime undefined, another case to find the critical number. The R prime equals zero from the numerator equals zero. That is negative 6.4x plus 160 equals zero. For the undefined, that means the denominator gonna be zero. If the denominator is zero, so e to the 0.04x equals zero, which is not gonna happen because x is positive. Mm -hmm. And you can get the error message if you look for the x for this case. So we just target on the case that the r prime equals zero to find the critical point. Now we're gonna solve for x. To solve for x, um, at this step, oops, I'm going to move this up a little bit. So we're going to subtract 160 both sides to get negative 6.4x equals one negative 160. And the next step, just process the same as when you solve the algebraic expression, divide by negative 6.4. Now what we get, we're going to get x equals negative negative cancel. So you look for the value 160 divided by 6.4. What is problem? And what do you get? Uh, is it get 25? You get x equals 25, yes. So you got the x value. And we don't know for sure yet whether this x is going to give you the maximum revenue. You're going to test it at at x equals 25 at the left end, at the right end, okay? So what is the revenue at 25? What the revenue at zero? What the revenue at 95? So you have to plug in the calculator and then get the number out. And the revenue function is 160 multiplied by x, multiplied by e to the negative zero point 0, 4 times x, which is 25. And at 0, do the same way, 160 times 0, e to the power 0 is obviously 0 for this case. The last one, 160 times 95 times e to the negative 0 0.04 to the power 95, I mean, times 95. So we just um, put in the calculator and then compute the revenue at each one of them. So the first one, which is 160 times 25 times e to the power negative 0 0.04 times. Um, 25, right? Mm -hmm. So we got 1471.5. Two. I put a note here. This is one four seven one point five two, and then at ninety five, I will get. Uh, you check the number for me if I get the, the right number, or the same number that what you got. So the revenue at ninety five gonna be three hundred forty, point. 0, 4, as we keep the two decimal places, is 
confirm that R at 25 is the maximum one or the absolute maximum revenue. Yes. Okay, we get the right answer. That's part A, okay? And then the rest of them, you just have to find out what is the price per unit or go back to the function D. So next one for part B, we're going to find a price per unit, which is the D at 25. And D is 160 times E to the negative 0 0.04. And then you multiply by the value 25. And you should get the number. Let me check this real quick. So it's going to be 58.86 which is the same as the answer on the back of the document. So 58, oops, where did it go? So 58.86. Um, 